His name's Phil. And his name is Tim. And this is Tim and Phil Talk About Games. A podcast where Tim and myself get together and talk about games we've recently played and topics in the world of gaming. This week we're hacking into your phones, cloning your credit cards and rifling through all your most embarrassing social media photos as we become Aiden Pierce in Watch underscore Dogs. <laughs> Uh, keeping in the dystopian future mode, we'll be picking up a softly spoken sword and deconstructing an army of robotic jerks in Supergiant Games' always stylish transistor. Woo! Yes, so, once again, we are back. Uh, we're actually a little bit ahead of schedule this time. We're not fortnightly. This is actually a weekly. Although by the time Tim gets around to doing the video, maybe it will be fortnightly. But, uh... <laughs> A <laughs> uh, little bit of a dig there. Um, yeah, so we are Tim and Phil. We do talk about games, and this is the Tim and Phil Talk About Games podcast or vodcast. Once again, we will be broadcasting to YouTube uh, at some point in the future. But if you are listening to our podcast yet again, we just wanted to say we love you and we're always thinking of you, even before we go to bed. In fact, especially just before we go. Anyway, um, yeah, so today we are talking about a couple of games that we were kind of really excited to talk about. That's why we're. we're, we're speeding up the schedule a little bit. Um, one of which is the incredibly hyped uh, Watch Dogs. This has been on just about everyone's radar for quite some time. Uh, mm -hmm. It got delayed, uh, what, two or three times? Two times? At least two times, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, which was, uh, I want to say as well, was a good thing. Yeah. I think yeah. more people should be willing to delay their products. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and the other one is a slightly more indie, but not... Not too indie, I guess. Uh, a fairly well-respected company uh, who made Bastion uh, last year, or the year before last. Was it 2012? Mm -hmm. I think it was 2012. Um, too long ago. Too long ago. Too long between drinks uh, with these guys. Uh, and they are out with a new uh, game, very much in a similar style, if not gameplay content. Uh, well, though, I mean... Yeah, the gameplay is relatively similar, but they do some really interesting things, which obviously we'll get onto, uh, which is Transistor by Supergiant Games. Uh, it is also our 20th episode, which is Woo! pretty exciting. Um, Double think... digits! Yeah. Oh, wait. Well, no, wait. we're already <laughs> 10, isn't it? <laughs> yep. So, uh, yeah, so we're at 20 episodes. Didn't ever think we'd get this far, but, uh, you know, to those 20 or 30 people who listen to us <laughs> every, every week. Every week. <laughs> we appreciate We know it. all your names. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we do appreciate it. And uh, any feedback that you give us is great. Uh, we've had people tell us that they enjoy the podcast, and that's nice. Um, but uh, yeah, so. Warm and fuzzies. Very much warm and fuzzies. Uh, to celebrate the 20th episode, we will be giving away a copy of Transistor. Uh, it's an awesome game, as you will hear us discuss in this week's uh, episode. Uh, so if you want to win that, just stay tuned until the end of the episode. We'll give you a pass phrase to use. Uh, and then you can just use that, uh, enter the, well, comment or, I don't know, comment anywhere pretty much. Comment on our Facebook page, on our website, on our YouTube channel, wherever. It doesn't really matter. Uh, with that phrase and you'll go into the draw. Once again, we'll just draw it randomly from the people that enter. Uh, last time, I think we only had two people enter. So it was a coin flip. So hopefully we get a few more people uh, entering today. That would be great. Um... So I guess without further ado, we should probably get on to the games. Uh, which one did you want to do first? Let's save the dessert till last. <laughs> okay, so Watch Dogs first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, so uh, I have not played very much Watch Dogs. In fact, you could say I haven't played any Watch Dogs. Uh, that is because mainly, you don't own it. <laughs> mainly because I don't own it. Also because of the fact that I have actually broken my collarbone recently uh last week uh in two and a really good break too yeah really good break. serious effort yeah it was, uh, it was a decent effort did it at soccer so playing games yet again just real ones uh and yeah so i haven't been able to play very many games that involve two hands i am getting there uh i do have limited use of my left hand now which is good uh which means that i can get back into playing transistor and, and all the other games that have been piling up in the week that i've been out <laughs> um <laughs> Also, top tip, if you are looking for games that are really good to play with one hand, and that sounds dodgy, but it isn't, um, the two games that we reviewed last week, Hearthstone and Card Hunter, excellent. They've kept Great it games. going. Really brilliant. So, um, yeah, if you're ever stuck 
uh, needing to only use one hand to play games, I can thoroughly recommend Card Hunter and Hearthstone. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, without further ado, what you do with the other hand is entirely up to you. Exactly. We don't need to know <laughs> whether it be by accident or choice. Uh, <laughs> anyway, without further ado, we should get by to. Accident? With oh, I don't know. I don't... Well, Accident, How do you accidentally in, do that? I've, no, no, I've just had an accident. Whether the source oh, of your right. only having one... Yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, so we should get on to a shock. So, as I said, I haven't played it very much, so Tim's going to be leading the discussion here, but I am going to be querying him very uh, very closely because I'm interested to see how this game has lived up to the hype. Um, that's so, it, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is one of those games that's very... It's very Call of Duty-esque in the fact that it's been in all the media, it's been on... I, I, I have even heard that it has real TV adverts, which... Oh, really? Yeah, wow. I don't own a TV, so <laughs> I can't verify that. I've, but I've, I've seen it on buses and bus stops. Yeah, oh. yeah, I do take buses, so yeah. I have in- encountered that one. Mm. Um, yeah, it's it is. Look, it's a game that I was looking forward to mm. a fair bit. Um, although it was one of those cautious optimism games for me because I am always loath to look forward to any game mm. ever. <laughs> at all well, we, or anything we, in life really <laughs> I just never look forward to anything that way I can't be too depressed exactly if you look forward to things then you're just going to be disappointed Tim you should know that <laughs> oh I do um, but no especially AAA games and especially mm. games that are posited as you know the, the next big thing or um, the game changer for the next generation yeah. like any of these sort of catchphrases I usually am the one to sort of say hmm Let's hold on and see. Let's yeah. <laughs> let's not jump to any conclusions. Yeah, for sure. So I was, in some ways, pleasantly surprised, and in some ways, um, vindicated in disappointment mm. by <laughs> Watch Dogs. It has some serious pros and cons. Right. But before getting into any of that, if you haven't, if somehow you have never heard of Watch Dogs before and mm. have never seen a bus advert or a TV advert or or haven't been or on the one internet of the in the many past two gameplay years, videos that have been spooked around <clears throat> yeah the basic premise of the game is that it first of all it is a very GTA-esque game mm-hmm. it is a sandbox world where you can roam around perform little side missions here and there um, but the guts of the game is mostly causing you know sandbox mayhem really sure. so in the same way that GTA has uh, and, and games like Saints Row for example have um, a story that's going on and mm. they have a main sort of quest line of missions that you perform. The guts of the game is usually built around stealing vehicles <laughs> and driving them off bridges um, <laughs> or, you know, just goofing around, essentially. Right, right. <clears throat> the, this game is set in Chicago, which mm-hmm. is a city I have never been to before, as I, I haven't have. yet been to America. That's the have one you? place I've been to in America, yep. I went um, there for some bean line time. When I was, uh, when I was oh, in that's right. No, I remember yeah. that. Yeah, it's really cold. Like, yeah, it's, it's really. Cold. I hope everyone in that game is like rugged up, something chronic, because it is freaking cold. When I went there, that's there all I little, remember about it. Yeah, there are layers yeah. <laughs> of clothing. <laughs> um, in fact, that's one of the bullet points on the box. Is that okay. every NPC has layers? <laughs> Warm clothing simulator 2014. <laughs> um, but Chicago is also a city that I have a bit of a uh, mental love affair fascination with. Sure. Um, Why is that? Because, well, I love the architecture, I love the history mm. of the city, um, the great fire of Chicago that burnt everything to the ground and then mm. rebuilt it all, has this sort of really interesting blend of Art Nouveau meets sort of, you know, 1900s, 1800s architecture. Like, mm. it's just, it's really interesting architecture. I think sure. it looks, looks fascinating. Um, and as you know, uh, I set a game of Vampire the Masquerade oh, in Chicago with yeah, yeah, yeah. a group of friends of mine, mm. um, because it just has that really sort of nice gritty feel to it. Like mm. it's the perfect city for a, a, a cyberpunk esque, film noir esque sort of, you know, that kind of. So is that the setting. is that the kind of setting that we're we're talking about here? Like it, it, it seems very dystopian. Like it seems yeah, very, it is. Yeah. So the the story of the game is that there is a company called uh, CTOS, mm-hmm. um, or a, 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 what's the company name. So the the premise of the game is that there is a one operating system mm. that is controlling everything in the city, from okay. traffic lights to street lamps to you know mobile phone towers. Everything is all interconnected by this one big architecture. Mm. It's very you know it's very Google esque. 
um, oh, okay, meets yeah. sort of uh, you know go private controlled but government um, government utility sort of merger mm -hmm. between the two. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so. The premise of the game is that it's the near future, and we're talking very near future, like, you know, mm. maybe five years at the most, um, and you play as Aiden Pierce, who is a hacker, mm -hmm. and he essentially <coughs> is capable of getting into the CTOS system and being able to control and seizing... <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> that was awkward. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> he never sneezes, although some people do sneeze in the game, and I thought it was a really nice touch, because <laughs> I have walked past NPCs, and they've sneezed, and I've gone, oh, bless you. <laughs> oh, wait, that's, that's awkward. <laughs> that's not a real thing. So, yeah, you, you can log into the into the CTOS um, architecture, and you can manipulate the things in the game, whether sure. it be security cameras, traffic lights, you know, bollards in the road. You can raise and lower bollards. You can... Mm -hmm raise and lower bridges that cross, you know, water. Mm -hmm. All these sorts of things. You can create blackouts. You can... Um, a, a big part of the game is uh, about hacking into people's phones, stealing mm -hmm. their bank account details, cloning their credit cards so you can use them at ATMs. Hmm. All this kind of stuff. That's cool. Um, so, so is, the it, game... is it more action or is it more stealth? Like, because it seems like it should be more stealth, but... It can go if either way. GTA, like... It can go either way. So I try and play it stealthy because that's my, my shtick, well, yeah. you know, in Deus Ex and in all the the optional stealth games. I'm mm. always the stealth character sure. and or the personality character that tries to, you know, talk his way out of situations rather than fight. Yeah. But in Watch Dogs, and this is one of the things, the, the first gripe I have with the game is that it doesn't really empower you in that sense. There is a lot of things where you're like, oh man, it would be really cool if I could do this and sneak in and sneak out. But every situation almost always devolves into a gunfight. Oh, almost really? always. Yeah. Are you sure you're just not bad? I'm no, no. Kidding, it's... I'm kidding. You're good at stealth. <laughs> <laughs> stealth is my thing. Yeah. But um, no, it's not even that because like even if you do stealth your way through a situation, right. 90% of the time, once you've stealthed your way in, it then tells you to kill everyone. Oh. <laughs> You're like, oh, but I just did a really good job with yeah. the stealth thing. Why do I now have to kill everyone? Oh. So it's kind of built into the mission. <laughs> yeah, like some of them are some of them are built into the missions. Um, right. The other. So what's the well, so what's the justification of needing to kill a bunch of people? Like how? Right. And that... so this is the thing, right? So I I did things kind of a bit backwards because I've been playing. Uh, I, I mean, I'm a completionist as well, yeah. so when I jump into a game, I'm like, oh, let's go to the edge of the map and get this thing, and then go to the other edge of the map and get this thing, and, and do all these things. And I Side kind of, missions. <laughs> yeah, really big on the side missions. Sure. And so I've, I left off the main quest line a little bit for a mm. while, probably for too long, in fact. Um, and then also, in for the podcast, um, I spent a lot of time recording. Hmm. And when I was recording video, I didn't want to record any of the main quest line stuff because spoiler spoil alerts things, yeah. and all the rest of it. So I kind of put off the... Ooh, sorry, microphone. Um, I kind of put off the main quest for quite some time. Mm. And in doing so, kind of left myself in the dark as to why I was doing something. So my oh, first right. interactions with the game were a little bit sort of marred by this bizarre disconnect of why am I murdering all these people? Yeah. Um, and then you do some of the main quest line and you're like, oh, okay, so these people are kind of bad people. Right. I guess it's okay to murder them. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Is, is it one of those things where it doesn't really fit with your character's personality? Like, I would imagine a hacker is not someone that can, you know, in good conscience, go around and start to just gun down people. Yeah. So it's kind of complicated because you are, you are the vigilante. Right. Um, and this is shown in the very opening cutscene, so this isn't spoiler mm. territory. But essentially, you... I mean, but the thing is, you're not a good person either. Oh, okay. <laughs> you start off as a criminal, and you, you're on this criminal mission, and it goes bad. And your partner gets too greedy, and you try and pull out, and mm. um, as a result, things go haywire... 
and the people you're either against or working for, it's not really super obvious at the beginning. Yeah. Um, they essentially take it upon themselves to teach you a lesson for doing the wrong thing, yeah. and they kill your niece. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. So pretty brutal. Um, it's meant to be teaching you a lesson, but it's it's made pretty obvious that they were, you know, they were quite willing to to murder your family members to make you toe the line, sort of thing. Wow. So you go on this massive mental breakdown and become this sort of vigilante Batman esque type thing, but you're not really a good Batman. You're kind of like a naughty Batman. You're like a murdery Batman. You're a very murdery Batman. <laughs> um. And so you go around and you you can either play up the good vigilante or the, the bad vigilante because there is a morality bar in, in there like so many of these games have. Yeah. And you can either stop crimes before they happen or you can just do whatever you want to make your life easier. Mm. You know, you can ignore the crimes altogether or you can just, you know, gun people down in the street for their money like it's... You can do, you can play the game however you really want to play it. Sure. So that's good in that sense because you know you should be able to play sandbox games how you want to play it, but there yeah. should also be, you know, risk reward systems in place to make it so that if you want to choose the harder route, hmm. you should be getting kind of commensurate rewards for those difficulties, and that's one sure. of the things the game starts to fall apart with. Hmm. Yes. Hmm? I was. I feel like I was talking too long. I was going to give you a oh, <laughs> moment no, no, no. to interject. No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm kind of interested in the like the pure gameplay. Like when you're walking around, like mm-hmm. how does it actually feel to? Because I imagine when it when it becomes more action based, like this is the thing that I'm wondering about. Because I haven't really watched any gameplay videos with regards to the. Um, like the hacking and all that kind of stuff, does that just basically go out the window once you get into a gunfight? Because I imagine it might be cool to like, if you're driving along and someone's driving behind you chasing you and you can hack into the bollards and raise them or something like that to make them crash. Does it like have some kind of mechanic where it slows down time so you can do that a little bit better? So there are two different mechanics for that. One is there's a focus button, which is control on the PC, Mm -hmm. uh, where you tap that and it it starts up a bullet time, essentially. You have a set amount of focus... Of a little bar that depletes, mm-hmm. and um, and that slows down time, allowing you to more easily, you know, take corners or hack traffic lights or whatever. The okay, second sure. thing is that if something is about to happen in the world that would be particularly beneficial for you, mm. for example, if there was a, you know, if you're being chased by the police and you they're about to hit an area that has bollards, mm. there is a quick time game where you can tap Q which is the hack button. Normally yeah. you have to hold Q down for it to complete the hack, but this one, if you just tap Q quickly enough to match the little flashing indicator, oh, okay, yeah. that will automatically time it so that the bollards raise right. in time for the police to hit them sort of thing. Oh, okay, fair enough. So they've thought about that, that's good. Yeah. The downside to the hacking is that um, there is a very limited amount of hacking that you can do. Right. So when you're driving, the main is that just hacks... because you haven't like is there a, a progress for hacking? Like, do you unlock different abilities or there is? I know you haven't done like I don't, I don't, obviously if you're playing not playing the main mission, maybe it hasn't unlocked stuff. Or... No, and see, that's the thing is that I've unlocked almost everything. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, I you know a couple of hours into the game, you can quite easily have unlocked ninety percent of your progression tree, mm-hmm. and you can easily have unlocked every car and every gun. And have a million dollars left over. <laughs> like, it is... It's it's a little too easy to progress in the game. I guess that's a comment on how easy it is to... hack stuff in real life, but... <laughs> well, maybe. I mean, the fact that the first couple of perks you get increases your hacking ability for cash rewards threefold oh, wow. is... Yeah, it's like you just, all of a sudden you just have all these resources and nothing to really do with it. Hold sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, so when you're driving, you can raise bollards, you can mm. turn traffic lights so that all the lights are green, in which mm-hmm. case all the cars just go at once and it's a master class of fuck. <laughs> um, <coughs> which is fantastic to watch sometimes, but also yeah. kind of, you know, awkward. Do you just sit on, like, 
the top of a building somewhere and just uh, <laughs> yeah. change all the lights. Yeah, you can do. I mean, there are so many really interesting things you can do. Yeah. Um, the There are steam pipes that you can blow, which right. is a high-level hack, um, because it's super destructive. Like, it's high-pressure um, mm. gas underneath the ground that just blows, sure. and cars just go everywhere. It's a complete nightmare and I will say that's actually one of the better looking effects in the game that the volumetric uh, or the it's not actually volumetric clouds hmm. but it looks volumetric and it's a pretty cool effect that they've they've done in that sense oh, okay cool um, so that's the stuff you can do when driving and then when in the sort of you know gun combat situations you can uh, raise and lower protectors that are in the ground which is like chest high cover that you can just randomly activate <laughs> Why it's there is completely <laughs> ob like obtuse. I have no idea Maybe. why city planners thought what we need here is some raisable chest high cover <laughs> in case someone gets into a gunfight outside these apartments. Maybe it's a thing in America. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Probably it's a thing. not. Probably they just needed some good old chest high cover. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you can uh, blow transformers. Okay, yeah. Sure. Um, so there's a you, bunch of there's a bunch of stuff you can do. Like it's not like you're, I mean, functionally you're not limited. Maybe they all achieve the same effect. Well, or, that's the thing is they kind of do just achieve the same effect. They yeah. either distract someone or they kill someone. Yeah. And the distractions are mm, they could work a little better than what they do. Mm. But I don't know. I find the hacking becomes a little bit stale quite quickly. Okay. Um, the the real joy of the game comes when you hack something in such a way that you know you set up a chain reaction or a particular setting that is unusual, and then you're like, "Wow, that was pretty cool!" You know, yeah, yeah. I accidentally hacked this thing that made a car fly into a river, or you know, yeah. Yeah, whatever yeah, yeah, the situation yeah. might be. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, it's I feel like they could do a little bit more with the hacking side of things. I mean, it is the guts of the gameplay, and sometimes yeah. I feel it gets a little bit left by the wayside in favor of the the car driving and the gun battles. Oh, I suppose, I, I suppose gamers probably have a, a certain expectation of open world sandbox games that they're going to have those bits in them, and if they didn't have them in them, then and and to a certain extent, like represented to a, a, a kind of level then they might I don't know turn off people if the whole game was just walking around hacking I don't know I don't know whether or not that would be yeah. something that they would have looked at and gauged interest in yeah there's also a, uh, a hacking mini game where you essentially play a game of uh, pipe dream <laughs> oh right yeah <laughs> um, where you sort of rotate little pipes and allow your data snake to go <laughs> <laughs> Sounds kind of sexual. Snake, right, okay. um, yeah, you align the pipes and then penetrate it with your data snake, um, <laughs> which can be a little non sequitur sometimes. Right. Um, and there, I mean, th well, there's a I couple guess. of really cool things that happen as well, where you can hack people's uh, webcams and their phones mm. and just listen into conversations. And that's actually, for me, one of the most interesting parts of the game, mm. because you know sometimes you're like you feel like you wonder why you're doing the things that you're doing mm. but every now and then it makes a really interesting sort of social commentary on where we're heading in terms of things like social media yeah, yeah, yeah. which is really cool yeah. like you can uh, hack someone's connect for example <sighs> um, and watch God. them like working out in their apartment yeah fair enough um, <laughs> one guy just like randomly thrusting his hips towards the TV going <laughs> oh yeah I see you through my telescope like it's just <laughs> it's really awkward some of the things you can pry in on yeah but um, the other cool thing is that there's a character at one point where you meet um, where... She, and she is the first female character that you really meet in the game. Yeah. And she's a member of DeadSec, which is this sort of... Um, I mean, they're very uh, anonymous-based... Oh, okay, sure. ...hacking community. They're sort of like grey hat hackers. Mm. Um, and she's helping you by hacking into someone's account and, and like you're looking for someone in a crowded area and she starts looking through essentially her Facebook profile mm. as like, oh, well, she posted a selfie this morning so she's wearing a black jacket and a green backpack. Oh, that's cool. So, you know, there's some really interesting sort of comments that sort of make you go, ah, oh, that's actually a really interesting sort of yeah. take on the whole social commentary sure. side of things. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's there are some really interesting things that come out of the game. I just feel like sometimes they're a little bit too hidden and a little bit too much of the game 
is focused on the GTA style um, run and gun goof yeah. off in the world sort style, of thing. Style, yeah, gameplay. Fair enough. Um, so, in terms of like overall, like, would you recommend it or? I I would, but maybe yeah. not. Maybe not for seventy nine dollars. I was really yeah, lucky because I pre ordered it at forty nine dollars on Steam, and all of a sudden the price rockets up to seventy nine. I noticed that. Yeah, I noticed that. Was that a mistake by them, or were they? Just... No idea. Maybe it was a pre order yeah. special. I have no idea what the case was yeah. for that one. Yeah, that's um, weird. It is good. What, what maybe wait like... for it to come down a little. Yeah, because I, I mean, I, I know you were talking before about the fact that it's kind of. You're playing it on PC, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and it seems like maybe there's some limitations to that compared to what it, like, obviously, because it was released on yeah. every console, no demand, so... It was obviously made for console, too. Like, they were, mm. they turn around, it's like, no, nah, man, no, nah, it's cool, we, we put in, like, mouse controls. Mm. <laughs> That's great, I can use a mouse in some menu screens. In some menu screens, I can't use a mouse, which I will point out is a cardinal sin <laughs> like if i bring up the if i look if i look at my phone for example yeah. i can't select icons with a mouse i have <sighs> to like i move the mouse and that changes which icon is selected oh but it's god no, that's arbitrary. The worst. yeah it is absolutely the worst oh i've had that before it is really frustrating because there's no <sighs> feedback on what it should be obviously that was something that you would have done with the analog stick uh, yeah yeah you would tap left and right sort of thing God. Um, and the other thing is when you're selecting weapons, it's you hold down tab and then rotate your mouse. Oh my god, yes, yeah, again, that's another absolute. thing I've And had. then, and then, if you want to select a, a pistol, right, Yeah. you hold down tab, push your mouse upwards to select pistol, and then yeah. scroll with your mouse wheel to select the type of pistol you want uh. from a non, uh, like from a, an analog wheel of guns. <sighs> So like it is it is so incredibly frustrating to be yeah. able to select a specific weapon. And when you've unlocked all of them, going from your silenced <laughs> pistol to your <laughs> tiny machine gun pistol yeah. is incredibly frustrating. Just yeah. super, super frustrating. And ninety percent of the time I die because I'm trying to select a specific weapon mm. out of this pool of like thirty guns, ninety percent of which are identical. Mm. The, the controls are ass, essentially. Yeah, the controls right. are absolutely ass, especially on PC. The, the, the driving controls are super floaty yeah. um, and really difficult to get your, to wrap your brain around. Um, I tried it with a controller as well with my, my good old Razer um, Xbox controller. Oh, and man. even with that, it's, it's still a nightmare to drive. Mm. Um, once you get a hang of it, you can start to do some cool tricks, but... Uh, it takes a while. Yeah, it takes a long, a super long while to get yeah. good at driving. And I as you're I probably watching the with yeah. the video <laughs> that I'm uploading, like, there are some pretty serious fuck-ups <laughs> with my driving. I swear I'm not that bad. It's yeah. just really hard to drive. Yeah, sure, Tim. Um, no, I found that with, uh, like, GTA and stuff. It, it, it doesn't feel... This is commensurately worse than GTA. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I actually really enjoyed the driving in GTA compared to this. I just like it. I'm, I much prefer it when games just go right and screw. Like we don't have to be Gran Turismo or Forza here. Let's just make it kind of arcadey. Like mm. I, I'm much more. Happy and see, when... that's the thing. It's neither of the two. It's oh, not right. simulated and it's not arcadey. It's somewhere in the middle and it just falls short either way. So one thing you cannot do is you cannot cruise in Watch Dogs. Mm. One thing I loved in GTA, like one of my best memories in GTA, was driving in the rain mm. and having all the beautiful reflections on the road in the car and listening to, like, um, 1979 by Smashing Pumpkins and just yeah. cruising through, you know, the the city of um, whatever it was in GTA 4, I forget. Yeah. Uh, you just can't do that. There is There are two speeds in yeah. Watch Dogs and it is <laughs> stop or go. <laughs> So you're either going like a hundred miles an hour down side alleys with all the motion blur and all the fancy stuff, or mm. you're, you know, you're crawling well, that, along. That also might be something to do with, like obviously on an Xbox controller or something like that, you do have that um, degree of movement in the trigger. Of the analog, yeah, we, it's still, even with that, I still, there is no cruise speed, it is yeah. whoa, whoa, go, it's, there's yeah. no middle ground.
Right. And the other, the other, other thing that really frustrates me is that uh, at the moment there are some pretty serious slowdowns on PC. The oh, game on right. PC is a bit of a mess. If you've got to buy it on console, buy it, yeah. buy it right now, because um, and this is the really big thing is that the multiplayer is a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. The one thing I would buy it for on consoles is the multiplayer, and the multiplayer community is a lot of fun. Obviously, you're going to have to do the usual mute everyone with the microphone thing, because <laughs> it's just a bunch of dick bags. Right. But the ability to seamlessly jump in and out of multiplayer sessions, especially with the, the hacking one-on-one sort of spy versus spy game, that mm. is a lot of fun. Awesome. A is it lot how many of players fun. is multiplayer? Between it, there's so there's different game modes. There's one v one up to four v four, depending on the type of game mode that you're playing. Sure. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Really, really good. But and this is <clears throat> um, the and this is where I guess the the key word for the uh, transistor giveaway of the game <laughs> is that <laughs> honestly, <laughs> fuck <laughs> you play. <laughs> That is the key word for the game. If you post back to us with the words, fuck you play, you win a copy of Transistor. Because yeah. and you wouldn't win a copy of Watch Dogs, that's for sure. Yeah. The, the you play compulsory DRM login system, I spent the first five hours of the game just trying to get into the game. Oh just trying God. to get through you play's bullshit. It's so like, bad, isn't it? I've, I've got a copy of Far Cry 3. Is it Far Cry Yeah. 3? Yeah, yep. I've never played it because I can't get through you play. Like I, I can't. I just cannot. It won't let me. Like yeah. sign up, log in, register, whatever. It just will not let me get so, it. And then so you log into Steam and you load up Watch Dogs in the Steam or what? It's that what logs uh, that loads up the you play mm. client and then the you play client logs in and then it cloud saves your saves and it's like, well, I can't find your cloud save files. Sorry, man. <laughs> like, well, that's because they're stored locally, you dick. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, the ones locally don't match what I can't see on the internet. <laughs> I, 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 what? I, I can't help you with that. <laughs> and then you finally do log on, and it's like, well, you don't have an avatar uh, loaded up. Do you want to change that? Well, I, yeah, I guess. Oh, uh, can't. The avatar system's down. <laughs> I, all right, well, then don't worry about the avatar. Are you sure? Avatars are pretty cool, man. <laughs> Having an avatar would really change your experience. No, I don't yeah. I don't care about the avatar. Just let me play the fucking game. All right, I'm loading your cloud save now. You, no, you can't. You just said you couldn't find it. <laughs> hey, I can't find your cloud save. <laughs> I know! You just said that! <laughs> Fuck! Yeah, okay. So you play, obviously, is a downside to this. Yeah. This is like, again, anything that... Any, anything where you just have to log into another service to use your game is just really bad. Like, Games to Windows Live, mm-hmm. annoying. You play, annoying. Super annoying. Uh, anyway. Just don't so, do it, guys. Stop trying to make you play a thing. It's, it's not, not a, a thing. thing. It's not a thing. The only reason Origin got anywhere is because it had Battlefield. Like, everything else. And even then, everyone still goes, seriously, stop trying to make Origin a thing. Just release your games on Steam, guys. Yeah, seriously. So irritating. Anyway, so... As in terms of like what what who who would like it? What what kind of other games? If you like if GTA, you like I guess? GTA, yeah. yeah. If you like Saints Row, um, sure. go for it. If you like uh, borderline misogyny, <laughs> <laughs> is it that bad? Is it? Uh, it's a little bad. Yeah. Um, the female characters are not well done. You don't yeah. even come into a like. So there are two essentially two female characters. One of them is like a really stereotypical sassy single mom who is oh, your sister right. and she just cries a lot and then says get out of my life and then says no but I love you you're my brother mm. uh, and then the other one is essentially a suicide girl pin up <laughs> <Like, laughs> right. she's hyper sexualized and she starts off being like a little bit you know in control but it's rapidly approaching love interest category which I'm okay oh, right. with but just you know let her they're the only two yeah. yeah, yeah, and then the NPCs, like all the, mm, yeah, it's just it's not particularly well done. The female characters are not good female characters. Mm. Um, most of them are forgettable, and the other ones are just kind of princess in the tower, or oh, yeah. yeah, it's very mm, mm, awkward, cringeworthy at points. Yeah, indicative of <laughs> general trends, I guess. That's not very yeah. good. Um, okay, well, I guess... I would recommend it, but, yeah. like, you're gonna have to, like, you're gonna have to want to play it. 
Right. Don't don't just buy it on a whim. You're it's gonna have not, to it's want to play it. It's not a whim it. buy. Right. Fair enough. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's Watch Dogs. You can get it through Steam. Also, uh, logo watch, oh. just quickly. Uh, uh, the the Watch Dogs logo kind of looks like the Cat Empire logo. It's a little bit... It doesn't really make any sense. I don't, okay. I don't get it. <laughs> maybe, we maybe. Have, maybe we should Google that one. Because last time that we said that we didn't get a, a logo, it was actually really, It was really the, clever. the Braille thing. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool. This one, it's know. just... Mm, I don't know. Well, what about Ubisoft? What, what is Four Ubisoft? Logo. Oh, I don't know. What week is it? What color <laughs> underwear are they wearing? Like, <laughs> it, I think it's a it. U. Is it just a U? Yeah. I honestly can't even think of it. So get a in a bubble, a U in like a, a stylized bubble thing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll yeah. trust you on that one. Cool. All right. So logo watch is done. So yeah. So I guess Watch Dogs. It's been hyped to death. There seems to be a lot of backlash against it on the internet, uh, but. If you're not part of the hype train, and if you are interested in these kind of games, these kind of open sandbox games, then uh, then maybe check it out. Uh, yeah. If you're curious about the gameplay in more depth, maybe uh, have a look around on YouTube, but obviously we'll have the video scrolling while we're talking about it. Uh, anyway, we should probably head on to Transistor then. Transistor. Transistor. Uh, I don't know why we're saying it like that, because it's not no, French. It's not French. Uh, <laughs> not even a little. <laughs> it's maybe influenced by uh, kind of... Art Deco, but a little bit. But neoclassicalism. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so Transistor is the follow-up to... Uh, well, not follow-up. It's not, it's not a direct sequel at all. Uh, but it is definitely a spiritual successor to Supergiant's Games Bastion, which was released, I think, a couple of years ago. I think it was 2012. Um, but, yeah, so Bastion was a game that both myself and Tim loved to Love. death. Love. It is uh, essentially uh, an action... I think they call them action RPGs. We were debating this again. Diablo-esque style uh, action sort of. RPG. Yeah. Uh, it's it's definitely not about the loot, uh, just to get that out of the way. In fact, um, I wouldn't, you know what, I probably wouldn't compare it to Diablo. I would compare it more to a side-scroller, except isometric. Yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because there are, you kind of, so in Bastion and also in Transistor, you're kind of moving from set piece to set piece. So you're moving between areas, and when you get to those areas, you kind of, there is a... Uh, a bunch of enemies that appear and you have to basically work out the best way to find them. Yeah. Similar yes. to Bastion was relatively similar. Bastion had the really cool thing of the landscape building as you walked along it uh, and that that they had a very very clear artistic sensibility uh, and they wanted to obviously make a game that was beautiful and also functionally very uh, I guess adept. Like yeah. they didn't it, it didn't do crazy things like it didn't try and introduce anything crazy in the way of gameplay it was just a very very solid experience but with that artistic style and with the story that it told and with the the highly polished uh voice acting uh, and also the, so good the soundtrack was amazing darren corp's soundtrack was just uh, i i used to listen to it like daily uh, at work. i still almost do <laughs> yeah it's it's uh if you haven't checked out the bastion soundtrack definitely check that out anyway we should start talking about transistor so transistor is the follow-up to bastion uh it's been highly anticipated by myself and tim for quite a while uh and it definitely delivers as far as i can as far as i've played uh so it tells the story of a silent protagonist again uh, the original so bastion had a silent protagonist this time you have a silent protagonist uh all the voice acting is done by what's his name logan Logan Cunningham. Logan Cunningham. Logan uh, Cunningham. <laughs> the guy with a really deep, gruff voice. Uh, he's, he does a really, really cool job. Uh, he plays the role of the Transistor, uh, as per the title. Uh, and the Transistor is like a... It's kind of like a... It's a sword, uh, which your character, who is an ex-opera singer, uh, carries around with her uh, throughout the, the level. Doesn't really carry it so much as she drags it and it kind of leaves this nice kind of sparking trail behind it. Um, <clears throat> so it tells the tale of Red, who is the, uh, who's the protagonist, the silent protagonist, who at the start <laughs> of the game... Who's silent for a very good reason. <laughs> yeah, so she has her voice. Her voice has been stolen from her. Uh, that's not really revealed yet, uh, anyway. I'm about four, four hours into the game. I haven't really found out what the deal is there. Uh, as per Bastion, the world is revealed quite nicely through different interactions, obviously with the voiceover of the Transistor, uh, but also through interacting with uh, stuff around the, the world, like um, 
little bulletin boards and stuff like that because it is quite a it's a futuristic uh, environment uh, so it's all very kind of digital i actually have a theory about that oh yeah yeah i don't know if it's spoiler territory but oh you think it's like future bastion or no no i i think mm, i think i think we're in a computer oh really okay maybe we are i have a feeling it's very matrixy because I mean, one of the things is when she drags the sword around, it's mm. all um, like there's these little sort of circuit board looking patterns yeah, yeah. that get revealed underneath her. Um, sure. Some of the things in the world exposition, like when you read some of the bulletin boards, there are one of the, uh, the side sort of characters um, is capable of painting the sky. Like there's all these sort of mm. magic realism things Go. that are, are just taken for granted in this world that seem mm. a little bit sort of odd and strange and computer yeah. Like but it feels well, very I mean, sort of... Mm, it, it might be. I mean, it might just be the artistic style that they've got, hey! which is beautiful, is by the way. There? It is a really lovely looking game. You can't fault the visuals, like, basically at all. Um, so, as far as the gameplay goes, it's, as we said, it's relatively close to Bastion in terms of, like, it's obviously an isometric top-down view. Um, you walk into set pieces and you're tasked with getting rid of these kind of digital looking dudes. Uh, they're, they're all called stuff like jerks and like baddies and stuff like that, um, which is kind of, I guess, indicative of Red's uh, way Mentality. of thinking. Yeah, yeah. She, she's kind of yeah, obviously named it. Uh, and, but the difference between Bastion and, and Transistor is that in Transistor you can either uh, engage the enemies in real time uh, using your different skills. So you'll have four skills at a time. Uh, you can either do that or you can do what's called, I think, turn, mm -hmm. which is where you stop time uh, and you can do a certain amount of actions within that stop time where the enemy will not be completely stopped but be slowed down while you're uh, taking all these actions. But and like once you've done those actions so it might be so rather than doing one attack like you can repeatedly do one attack in real time maybe you can like stop time run over to a guy and like kill a big dude before he can like really hurt you in real time so you'll be able to stop time and take him out like all in one go but then after you've done that you have kind of about I think it's about three or four seconds where you can't do yeah, anything. Yeah, it's actually quite a long time in terms it's, of combat. Exactly. So it kind of becomes quite puzzly. Like the actual combat becomes like, okay, well, I'm going to take out this guy in real time and this guy in real time, but then I'm going to stop time, run over here, hit this guy twice, and then use the remainder of my time to get to a safe place so that they can't just nail me once I've come out of like the slowed time. And it becomes very, very puzzly, I think. Yeah, because um, there's also a combo system where certain yeah. moves work better if they're strung together. For example, yeah. if you use the breach attack first mm. and then use the strike attack, I think it is, mm. um, the strike attack does more damage because the breach attack opens up their weaknesses and then yeah, the strike right. sort of punches through. And... So yeah, yeah, it becomes really, really interesting. Nice. And the fact as well that the they abilities can be morphed yes. together. That's cool. Run. Really Just cool. Run. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so as, as I was saying, you can... So you can equip uh, four abilities, but there's not just four abilities. You can you can acquire as you go through and defeat different enemies, and we don't want to give anything away. But it seems like it's kind of a manhunt for the people that took her voice and have been taking other people in the city. Um, as you defeat these enemies, you gain more abilities that you can slot into those four slots. But rather than just going, oh, well, you have to choose have four to abilities, to and if you, like, all the abilities that you haven't chosen, Whatever's you're after. just not using them, it's rather than doing that, they actually let you slot in those extra abilities, the and they modify they the abilities that you're using. So, to get again, say you're using the Breach, um, breach ability, uh, you can equip uh, a slot... Like, it, it has two slots that you can use to modify it. And if you equip the Bounce, uh, ability into one of those slots the breach ability will then strike an enemy and then bounce to other enemies kind of mm -hmm. in a zigzag pattern uh, or if you have the turn ability which is like a charm kind of thing uh, when you use breach it'll actually um, make that enemy fight for you for a short time um, so yeah it's 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 really cool because at like pretty much I think it's just about between every battle or maybe every two battles you can swap around your abilities really really quickly uh, yeah. and make it so that you can kind of 
you can really muck around with how you're approaching each like each situation uh, and I really like that about games I really like games where you don't get locked into this just the same solution like you work out a solution really quick like early on in the game and then it doesn't really encourage you to play around with stuff yeah whereas this it really encourages you you've got a you've got a limit on how many you can slot in it's like a memory limit sort of thing like you have about I think it's We're surrounded. off the top of my head like 12 sort of memory points and each ability is worth different things when it's used actively and when it's slotted yeah so you can kind of you have to customize it that way but it still encourages you to play around with different solutions and you know different enemies can be taken down easier with some things than others so it, it encourages you to every time you see one of those points where you can change around your abilities it encourages you to to kind of try something different out and and see what it does kind of thing so also the fact that by using an ability in a different way oh yeah that's unlocks right. more lore which is game brilliant as well. mm. yeah i i love that i love the fact that they've thought about that that they've said right how do we get people other than the fact that it is really easy to do how can we encourage people to try and play around with these abilities and like you know enjoy the game in different ways like try different strategies and that's yeah so how, I, how exactly does it work i can't remember you have to use them so some things you need to use actively and then some things you have to use passively and un until you've used it passively as a morph ability that's rather than right. the main ability you won't unlock the the second tier of law about the thing um, yeah. which explains more about what is going on and a huge Later part of the game is, is figuring out what is going on just yeah. like it was in Bastion as well a huge yeah. part of the world building is in the actual exposition which mm -hmm. is really really well done yeah absolutely yeah the, the fact that you have to the fact that they've made the story dependent on the play with the abilities is, is really cool. I really like that. I think probably you'll be able to get most of the main story from just playing through and with the voiceover from the Transistor um, Sword character. Um, you'll probably be able to get most of the story from that, but it's the, the flavor text and getting the full story, like getting what has happened to all these different people that have been abducted. Like, it, it, yeah, it really does flesh it out. And the fact that it's... Yeah, I really, I just really appreciate the, the design choice that they went into that to say that you need to play. Like, it encourages a sense of play. Not, not. It doesn't encourage just finding the most efficient solution and just sticking with that. Like, it encourages you to actually play around and, and enjoy it. Um, but yeah, so it's. I mean, I've yeah, as I said, I've put around about four hours into it. I have no idea how close I am to the end. Uh, couldn't. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea. Um, it's a little bit harder for me at the moment because I am playing kind of with one arm and a, a very ah oh, suck like, it up with a <laughs> with a left hand uh, <laughs> but um, I'm making my way through it it's and it's beautiful the soundtrack is awesome again it's Darren Korb and uh, who is it uh, Ashley, Ashley Ashley Barrett Ashley Barrett who Tim has a massive crush on so that's nice uh, <laughs> uh, his, his heart's throbbing ah oh, damn it we're doing video now so you can see me blushing <laughs> Um, yeah, Supergiant Games is, is a relatively small studio. It's only 12 yeah. people. Um, so we, we always like encouraging To be fair though, guys. I also have a massive crush on, on Logan Cunningham. So. <laughs> I just, I don't even know what the guy looks like, but his voice is just uh, it's delicious. His voice is like pouring whiskey over cold, like mountain gravel. And then, uh, <laughs> it's just, I don't know why you would do that, but. No, I, I don't know. Probably and someone's then, um, done it somewhere. And again, somewhere. Ashley Barrett, who is in. Uh, both Bastion and Transistor has just the most amazing voice, the mm. just incredible presence. Um, she's adorable, amazing, <laughs> and I love her. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess, yeah, it's, I mean, there's not too much we can say beyond that. Like, it is, as, as we said before, same as Bastion, it's a relatively simple game. Like, you get the hang of what you're supposed to do within, within the first. 10 minutes of playing the game. Tutorial is, you know, fairly good. Like, it just kind of takes you through the first couple of battles. And well, this is, the thing, this is one thing I want to say is that Supergiant Games is very, very good at the incorporated uh, story tutorial. Mm. It's a very difficult thing to do to be able to incorporate a tutorial into a game that teaches you the mechanics of the game that you need to, to do well at the game. Mm but doesn't do it in a way that feels contrived or even really feels like a tutorial. So, I mean, it's, it's very hard to do. The one thing that they have in their favour is the fact that both Bastion and Transistor 
have a main protagonist who doesn't necessarily know what is going on. Yeah, so, so the player and the protagonist is both... They are both finding out what's happened to yeah. the world around them. Well, it's a common technique is to make... In order to tell the player it what's is. going on, you have some uh, like two characters having a conversation. And in this case, the main character, the protagonist, doesn't know what's going on, has lost her voice, and so Transistor is, is kind of letting her know what's going on and letting the player know what's yeah. going on at the same time. It, it's relatively it's common. It's the amnesia fighting, thing. But, Although this is... a proper amnesia it's, it's the same mechanic as the amnesia mechanic yeah yeah but yeah, exactly. even with that said very few games that do that mechanic mm. manage to incorporate a learning time. curve that feels natural mm. and that's one of the things that they do at uh, Supergiant Games very very well yeah. um, at the first you know hour of the game that you you're learning all the different bits and pieces about it there's no real it's not holding your hand um, it lets you sort of experiment and play around with the abilities as it describes sort of how they work and how the things work. But at the same time, there's a lot of things that aren't mentioned and are just there for you to discover yourself. Yeah, for example, yeah. the fact that all the different moves are named after computer commands yeah. that you would sort of... You know, imagine, or at least imaginary computer Yeah, they've got the little brackets up. Yeah, so everything like breach is breach and then an open close parenthesis which in most coding means to enact a breach command. Yeah, call a function. Call yeah. A breach. So, I mean, there's lots of little things that they do that make you feel like you want to explore the world. You want to learn what's going on. You want to learn how to play the game rather than just being sort of sat down in a chair and have someone say all right you can open your inventory by pressing yeah. the i key yeah. like it's not it's not like that no. it feels much more natural and much more sort of organic and i really appreciate that yeah i mean uh, you know to give some kind of concession to other games that might have no trouble with no this, concession like, like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is a relatively simple game in terms of controls and stuff like that. It's pretty straightforward. So, I mean, other games where you do have, like, crazy inventory and you need to mix and match stuff, fair enough, like, you might have to just actually tell the player. But the fact that they've managed to do it here is, is obviously welcome and obviously they've done a really good job of it. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is that I, while we've banged on about the art style being amazing already, I, I just think it needs to be said that it's incredibly hard and you don't see it very often that people are able to take what is very much a 2D comic kind of style and translate it into 3D. Like yeah, it's is... almost a, a combination of watercolour meets cell shading. It's exactly. a very interesting art style that just looks fantastic. But the fact is that they, rather than doing something like uh, Disgaea, where they managed to do the art style by, by basically, like everything's 2D, like everything's kind of posterized like that. Um, well, no, that's not the right word, but... It's okay. With the words, it's, it's kind Whoa, of like... What's this we, yeah. Tonto? <laughs> oh, uh, sorry, what was, what was that word that you tried to say last week? I don't remember. Because it was it's, made up. It's a real word. <laughs> anyway, rather than just doing that, where they have kind of like a 2D sprite that's, that's walking around, they have translated these into 3D polygonal models, and that is... That's a really tough thing to do, and yeah. I don't know who's responsible for it. Probably you can find out on the team page of of Supergiant Games, but whoever is, like, that is a talent, and they got to hang on to that person, whoever it is, because uh, it just it just adds that little bit extra, like, to have it translated so well into 3D is, is a really, really great thing, and it just makes it look just that little bit more amazing, so, yeah, visually, I mean, this is a game that you can imagine people sitting around and watching, like, my girlfriend was watching me play it earlier, and, and she was like, yeah, that's, that's a beautiful game. Like, it's nice to watch, and the, the mechanics of the gameplay are interesting enough to watch that people will be able to sit around and watch you play it. Yeah. Like, so, yeah, absolutely. A, a, a and really, really another great little game. thing that they do as well, and this is something that I noticed in, in Bastion as that. well, is that mm. there is the ability to interact with the character in completely um, non gameplay ways. So there, for example, in Transistor, you can tap the Q key and do a flourish. Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which doesn't do anything. No. It just she just throws the sword up in the air and jumps up and catches it, and sort of spins around elegantly mm. and amazingly. <laughs> um, and you can also hold down the tab key, where 
everything sort of goes dark and a spotlight appears on her and she holds the sword like a microphone and just hums into it. Oh, that's right, yeah. And neither of these things serve any function. They're purely aesthetic, but they yes. they add something to the game that just feels nice. Like, it feels yeah. like you're, you know, why do I need to do that? I don't know. It just, it's sort of whimsical and, and just pleasant and just... Yeah. It fits. It really, really fits. Mm. Also, the other thing that works is the irreverent humour. Like, there are some some really, really nice sort of chuckle moments as well yeah. in the game, which are pretty yeah. fantastic. Oh, we should mention, uh, there's also, if you remember from, if you have played Bastion, you remember there's kind of like uh, challenges that you can do uh, that yep. net you extra experience and gold and stuff like that. Uh, in this same thing, uh, you know, about probably an hour or so into the game, you come across like a kind of a, a, a beach scene that's been kind of constructed out of nowhere uh, it's a back door they call it uh, and within that is yeah, <laughs> back door. Uh, within that is like uh, such a child's bill <laughs> yeah, four or five doors that you can enter and uh, there's okay, different challenges like kill X enemies in 30 seconds or solve this in one time, time stop turn kind of thing mm. like do that or Definitely you know anything or survive for a minute and a half like there's different challenges that you can do I think there's also a practice mode that you can just use to test out get different better. combinations yeah yeah get better um, so that's really welcome because it means that it means they are they obviously have thought about the fact that this combat is quite puzzle-esque uh, and they've kind of given you different puzzles to solve uh, based on constructed situations so yeah it, it's a it's kind of nice to jump into that and try and like you know beat the excuse me beat the times and get a bit of xp that can uh, help you level up and, and choose traits uh, through that so yeah it's it's really cool like just the whole package is i mean for the price point it's really really great um I dare say that in the future it'll be on steam sale but i would recommend not waiting that long uh, yeah and just going out and buying it now. you can also really grab experience. it from the super giant games website yeah, true. Um, and if you buy it in that way, you get a Steam key because mm. it's done through the Humble Bundle store, which is fantastic. Yeah. And it uh, directly benefits the developers, which I yeah. really appreciate as well. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, so I guess that should probably do it. We've, we've talked for about an hour or so. Um, <laughs> we could go longer. Much. We could go longer. We can always go longer. We can talk for hours. But... Uh, I guess that should yeah wrap it up um, so Watch Dogs recommended if you enjoy GTA and you enjoy uh, running around and people's lives uh, that, would be, that would be your game and Transistor recommended for everyone just everyone just everyone you just go out and buy it it's, uh, it's a really really amazing game and if um, you want to get people into gaming I reckon that would be a perfect one as well it's a really oh, yeah. really good game for that kind of thing so if you buy it as like a gift for people I think they would appreciate it I think it's, and it's not so challenging that it would put people off as well. That's the other thing. No, like, yeah. Um, you know, some, some games are a little bit too complicated uh, and can put people off if they're kind of trying to get into it. Um, so, you know, for, for people that maybe haven't played so many games, it might be a good one. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, oh yes, we should we should mention our uh, so our competition. As you heard before, if you if you <laughs> remember to, the passcode, <laughs> if you remember the passcode, which is an emphatic fuck you play, uh, if you go to any of our pages, so timofil.com, facebook.com, slash timofil, etc., etc., our YouTube page where this is going to be uploaded uh, is also another one. Or if you tweet at us, we actually do have a Twitter account, uh, which is at timofil. Uh, tweet at us, uh, comment at us, whatever. Uh, fuck you, play. You will get into the draw to win a copy of Transistor, and it is just which the is most not on you, play. <laughs> which is not on you, play. Thank or God. Origin, <laughs> or Origin, or any of those other systems that are just truly awful. Um, <laughs> so comment anywhere, and uh, and we'll do that. Uh, if you have the time as well, what would be another thing that we would truly appreciate people Head doing? On, uh, is to go to our iTunes page uh, and leave us some kind of review. If you could re leave a five star one, that'd be great. Uh, and or in the really, future, however many stars you think that we are worth, <laughs> <laughs> I would hope that we're worth five stars. I think I think we put together a five star show. Uh, but in the future, we are planning on doing some shout outs. So if you uh, if you leave a comment for us, we'll give you a shout out, give you a quick message uh, to say thank you very much for listening. Uh, I believe we did have. A recent like uh, on our Facebook page, which we wanted to say thank you for. Yeah, uh, so uh, that? that was. Used to be how many good drinking drinks. Philip Verheim. 
Right. Seaside. Great name. They are really great name. Yeah. I'm probably butchering it, but uh, it <laughs> popped up. It popped up just as we started recording that uh, yeah. Philip Verheim liked the Facebook page. So thank yeah. you, Philip. We really thank appreciate you. that. You have an awesome name. You do, uh, yeah. So if, if uh, people do like the Facebook page and and do reviews, we'll we'll try and give back by giving you a bit of a shout out uh, to say thank you. Anyway, uh, so as we said, comment on our pages. Uh, win yourself a gift and sister. Uh, if you want to find us, uh, if there are places that you want to communicate with us, you can find us on the web at timandphil.com. That's with two L's. Uh, on Facebook, obviously, we are at facebook.com/slash timandphil, and on Twitter, we are at timandphil. Uh, and YouTube, I think we I think we now have our own custom Beautiful. user. So we are the user Tim and Phil now. Yay! Uh, that's a little bit of mucking around with, to get going. Um, obviously, though, if you want to contact us directly, you can find Tim on Twitter at Dungeon Master. Uh, you can also find him uh, on Steam if you go to steamcommunity.com slash id slash ajatus. That's A-G-E-O-T-A-S. Ah, finally got it right. Uh, or at his website, which is com. And as always, you can find Phil on Twitter at ToothSoup or at at Tooth Soup, I guess. <laughs> you yes. can add him on Steam, the same deal with the steamcommunity.com forward slash ID forward slash Flaxair, which is yes. F L A X E H, Flaxair. Or you can always grab him at his personal website, which is toothsoup.com. Thanks for listening. And happy gaming. Man, we are getting good at this. We did not screw up like that.